Hello everybody, DJ here, and this is the first of a series on Natron, which is a node-based free compositor. If you haven't yet, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel to see new videos when they are released, and we're also on Discord, I have a Patreon, there's all sorts of stuff, so make sure that you check out the video description below for all the details on all that. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with just taking a look at the uh, main, uh, I guess you could say competitor, or the industry standard, which is Nuke, okay? So the Foundry... Uh, creates Nuke, which is a, or they develop Nuke, which is a uh, node-based compositor that's used in uh, AAA film creation and uh, TV VFX and stuff like that. So um, you can check out the website. I'll I'll throw it up in in the uh, description below so you can get to the link. But if you go down to the cost, you can see here that it's very expensive. Okay, so to buy it, it's you know this amount, um, and then there's different sort of tiers. Okay. So it is rather expensive. There's a lot of really great stuff that it has, and that's all fine. But for a lot of us, um, this is a pretty steep price to pay. And you can you know, check out these uh, other things here. It says right here, free access to uh, non-watermark versions of Nuke for certain things here. So you know, like that's all great, but if you're a professional and if you also want to learn it and you want to use the open source stuff, this is really not going to work out for you, OK? So if we go over here uh, to the Natron page, this is basically a free version of Nuke. Um, and it's a, a really good alternative. It doesn't do all the same things, but for most of you guys who are doing compositing, whether you're a professional or not, this is going to actually get you, I would say, at least you know 80 to 90% there. So uh, go ahead and you're going to go to the download section. You can take a look at the page, look at all the uh, cool stuff here, learn more and all that. And there's some uh, example scenes and everything. But you'll want to go to the download section here and pick whatever your operating system is, which, you know, here it's Windows. You'll click that. It'll download it. So once you have that downloaded, you'll go into your downloads folder. You'll double click on that. It's going to open up this setup window here. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. It might be hard to read some of this, but let's uh, go ahead and hit next. You can choose a different directory, all that kind of stuff. Now here, what you want to do here is um, you're going to want to make sure that you have this stuff on, especially this open FX stuff here. There's a lot of really great effects plugins that um, come with like DaVinci Resolve and it's, I think, even in Premiere and all that. So you want to make sure that those are checked on because it will allow you to do more stuff in the compositor. So if you need to use this legacy hardware support, go ahead and do that. Um, that's really up to you if you need to use this or not. So let's go ahead and hit next. There's this whole you know thing here, but basically it's free for everybody to use. Um, next, Natron, and all that. So we're going to go ahead and install that. And there we go. It's installed. And you might have a uh, shortcut on your desktop. I do not have one, so I'm just going to open it up from the Windows bar there. And when you open it up, this is basically what it is. Now, if you're used to compositing in a different program, like uh, let's say uh, After Effects or something like that, that's what's called a layer-based compositor, where you have like a series of uh, layers that you're importing. And this is a node-based system, which is the kind of like the new way of doing things. So. A lot, of the, a lot of you guys are Blender users. You'll understand that, you know, or hopefully you know that materials used to be all based on layers, and now it's done with a, with a node-based system, and almost everything is going to node-based, even geometry nodes and everything for Blender. So this is really the way to do things. And you'll see that there's a lot of, you know, stuff that kind of comes preset in here. And I'm just going to show you a really basic overview of um, the things that you really need to know. Now, first off, I'm going to tell you that uh, if you ever run into a situation where you've accidentally screwed things up in your, you know, window here, you can just go to Layout and Restore Default, and that will bring you back to everything being default. So I've, you know, when learning a new program, I'll accidentally mess things up, and I won't know what happened, and basically that's how you do it. Now, the, the windows here are basically uh, uh, responsive to wherever your mouse is. So down here... You can zoom in and out. Oops. You can zoom in and out down here. Um, and this window here, you can zoom in and out. And over here, you can do different stuff as well. So whenever you're doing something, you just need to make sure. Same thing with the timeline here. You just need to make sure that the uh, what you're doing, that your mouse is actually in the area that you want. 
Now, this kind of series is going to be on some basic stuff, and I'm going to show you some practical ways to use this to composite um, things like a background over a foreground um, character or something and adding glow effects and things like that. So um, I'm just going to be showing you the overall basics. This is not a super detailed compositing sort of course that I'm doing, just FYI. But let's go ahead and we're going to pull in something. We're going to pull in a layer, okay? So what I'm, gonna, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to grab an image. This is not going to be a whole bunch of compositing. Like I said, it's just to show you some basic stuff on this tutorial, um, just to get you kind of moving. So I'm just going to click and drag this right into here. Okay, so this is just a single image. Now you'll notice that I can't actually see anything yet in the viewer, but this has changed in size. Okay, so when you drag in what's called a read node, which is this guy right here, and you look over here on the right in your properties panel here, you'll see that it's called read one. And you can actually change this to whatever you want. So if I call this martini, it's going to be called martini here. And on the node, you can actually see it's a little bit hard to read, but you can see that martini is right there. Okay. So if we want to actually view this, we have to hit the uh, key one. And you can see right here with this viewer node, the one arrow right here, and you can just click and drag this up, it's now looking at this object or this read node. And if we zoom in, you can see that on the bottom right, right here, you can actually read the RGB values and the uh, hue, the uh, value, the luminance rating, all that kind of stuff is being read right here. And zooming in and out using the uh, middle mouse will kind of like allow that to happen there. Now what's really cool about this is you can actually view everything through different channels. So if I hit A, for example, that's showing me the alpha channel. If I hit R, it's going to show me the red channel. And you can see right up here, it's changing to the red. If I hit G, it'll go to green and B for blue. Or you can just click this up here and see all the different things that you can choose. But usually alpha, red, green, and blue is what you're going to be using for a lot of things that you're doing, whether you're doing color changes, color corrections, or pulling an alpha or something like that, that's usually what you're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and change this back. And you can just, if you find that you're like, oh, I don't know what view I'm in, just hit like A twice or R twice, and it will go back to the regular RGB values. Now over here on the right, you actually have a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so the file name here, that's just kind of where that's reading from. And if you ever have to update it because you render this out again and you need to update the viewport, you just hit this little refresh button right here to reload the file. And then you have uh, these settings right here. If it was an animation, you can have it hold, loop, bounce, um, go to black or show an error. And same thing for the last frame. So if you're making a looping animation, it makes it really easy to have that uh, visible in your viewer here. Um, and you have a lot of settings over here that are pretty straightforward. Some of the things that I want you to kind of like pay attention to is the output components. If you have something with an alpha channel, it's going to be RGBA. If you don't have something with an alpha, alpha channel, it's going to be RGB. And you can actually change it to not have that alpha as well. Let's just put that back to RGBA. And then right here you have what is in the file. So uh, I'm not going to go into pre-multiplied and all that kind of stuff right now. But... Basically, these are particular settings for compositing your image together. Um, often, you can just leave this exactly as it is and not worry too much about this. And we'll probably get into these settings a little bit later. But for right now, um, just kind of trust that when you bring it in, the defaults are going to be fine. Now, the other thing here uh, is your file color space and then the output color space. So sRGB and linear is pretty much normal for this type of thing. Um, you know these settings, you really have to understand color space for all that. And I'm not going to probably go too much into that, you know, particular thing. Um, just know that if you're usually doing things in Blender, uh, and for a lot of beginners, you're just going to be using the SR sRGB, which basically is the regular RGB channels here. And um, you're going to have a linear color space. Okay. Now, the next thing here is that kind of came down the list is called your project settings. And uh, you can basically change your project. And the default, when you bring in a read node like this, Natron kind of assumes that you're uh, trying to bring this in um, as you're basically like, this is going to be what your composition is going to look like. So 3,000 by 4,000. Now, if it's not that, you can 
either choose from the list here. So let's say I, I actually wanted it to be HD. You can change that. And that's the actual output format. But you can see that this didn't change. And that's because it's reading this node. OK. Um, you can also add a new format. So if you have some sort of weird, funky format that's not in the regular output format here, you can change that. Um, but for right now, we're just going to leave it to our custom that was brought in with our read node here. You can easily just, because uh, you'll get it to where you have a lot of these properties that start showing up as you're working through this, you can actually hit this little X button here that clears all the panels. And S will bring back your settings. And if you double click a node, any node, it will show back up in your properties. So let's just kind of move around really quick in, in here. And I'm just going to do one or two things to show you how you can kind of get started just at least importing some images and looking between two things. So if we have this martini here, and let's say we wanted to bring in um, something else, like let's say this reference for whatever reason. If I hit one, you can see right here, it's really tiny. And that's because it's a reference that I got offline, off uh, the internet. You can see it's 448 by 310. And if I hit one over here, it goes back to this big one here. And if I hit two, you can actually, and you can see there's a, even a three down here, you can actually go between the two. And if you hover here and watch right up here, if I hit one, then two, you'll see that this little bar or this little um, target crosshair shows up. And you can actually pull it across the frame and compare two items. And you can use this little handle right here to view those different things kind of like fading into one another or wiping it across like this. And this is especially helpful if you're doing a comparison. So if I take this and I'm just going to add, if you if you go in here, by the way, and you hit tab, you can actually search for these things. So like, let's say I want to do a color correct. And I take the source here and I drag that in. And I hit one here to view through my color correct. You'll see that now I have this setting right here in my properties uh, panel. I can now take the saturation, and I'm just going to do some weird stuff just so that we can see the difference. So I'm going to, like, let's say, pull this way down and just kind of make this weird looking. Okay. So, and let's say that from this point, I want to compare the two to see what the changes are. Right now, if I take this little crosshair and I move it across, nothing's happening. And that's because there's no second viewer put in here. If I take this and I pipe it in there, or if you just hit two here, and you look up here at the top, you'll see that there's a color correct and a martini right here. You can choose those and change them if you want. And then right here, there's wiping, onion skin, or all these different ones. But usually the wipe under or over is usually what I use. And if you drag that across, you can actually compare the differences between the two here. And if I use the little handle there, you can fade the two in and see which one you like more or which effect, you know, what, what you're trying to do um, as far as like comparing the two images. Okay. So that's pretty great. The other thing that I want to show you just very, very briefly is how to put one object or one thing over the other. So I'm going to actually delete this. And I'm going to, let me see if I can find. So I went ahead and I brought in this uh, sort of like dirty uh, lens dirt sort of thing here. And if I hit two here, you can see that I have this one here and then this one here. Um, and they're not the right format. So what I'm really gonna what I'm gonna do here to sort of fix that is I'm going to type in reformat, and I'm gonna format this to the 3000. If you look right here, it says type to format format 3000 by 4000. Okay, so now it's formatted to that vertical orientation, and then I'm gonna add a transform which if I take that and I rotate this, you can see that now it is vertical. And then I will take this part right here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. I'll just drag this down. I can drag this up like that. Now it's not, it's a little bit stretched. You can even, let's actually do something like this or whatever. This is just to show you what's going on. Um, ignore that warning it doesn't really mean anything right now 
So, come on now. Let's just replace this. Boom. Boom. So basically I just copied and replaced that because I was getting that weird little warning there. So I put in a reformat node and a transform, and then I have this martini here. And what I want to do is I want to put this lens dirty thing over this martini. So let me pull the viewer down here down a little bit. And let's do this. You can left click and drag to box select this stuff. And what we want to do is called a merge operation. So if I hit M and I take A and I put it into this transform, so this lens dirt, I want this over this martini. And I'm going to left click and drag these off and then just hit one right in there. And you can see that now it is merged over the top. And if I view through this one right here, through this read, and I hit A, you can see that there's no alpha channel. It's basically just an RGB value. And if I look through, you can see that it's like that. If I double click on this item, you can see right here, it says output components are RGB. If I choose A, you can see that now there's an alpha channel, okay? So let's look back through this merge. And if I click this right here to clear all the panels, double click the merge, you can see right here it says operation over and bounding box is union. So basically what this means is the operation, just like any other uh, program like Photoshop or whatever, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here and you can actually hover over this and hold shift and down and you can cycle through all the different effects. We're gonna make this a screen. So if we keep going right there, screen. And then the bounding box, basically it's showing you these two, it's showing you the, uh, the lens dirt and then the martini. And what you want is kind of this uh, bounding box just to be whichever one is the actual final sort of like uh, composition you want. So I'm gonna change this to a B and then you can see that it's taking the B channel right here from the A channel here. You don't have to do all this stuff here. I'm just kind of trying to show you how this merge operation works. So from there, that's how basically you can uh, take one image or video and put it over the top of another. So just really quick before I go, I want to show you how to save your file. So if you go up here to file, save project as, navigate to your location, and then at the very end here, what you want to do is you actually want to put in a opposite slash. So you see all these forward slashes here? You want to put in a backslash right here and name this what you want. So we're going to call this Natron Test 01 and then hit save. And if we look inside of our folder, you can see that now there is a file saved and the uh, auto save right here. So that's basically going to be it for this tutorial. Please make sure that you've subscribed so you can see the next set of tutorials on this compositing software. I will be uh, working towards showing you guys how to make a composite like the uh, character animation that I did recently on the channel. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. So I'll see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.